Hi, we are traveling after three years. My God, we are going to Hawaii. I need to pack. Uh, let's see. Why is there so much clothing here? I need my multimeter, some wires. Yeah, damn it, I don't think my oscilloscope fits. Mm, it's okay, because my sponsor Cheeside is holding a massive innovation challenge contest for graduate and undergraduate students around the world with huge awards of 20,000, 25,000 and 30,000 dollars with an additional 10,000 dollars worth of tools. I'll tell you the details when I return from Hawaii. At the end of the video. Oh, by the way, we are going to Maui. Let's go! Ah, beautiful Hawaii. And the beautiful Hawaiian outlets. I shall check you out. Hey, this is actually not bad for a budget Hawaiian hotel. Nice. And in Hawaii, you don't even need to lift an arm to turn the lights on and off. What is this code? Made for people below one meters? All of them are super low. But I also noticed they installed their door handles as low as their switches. <laughs> Why is everything so low? Might be specific to this location though. I have to check other places. Oh yeah, this one is proper height. <laughs> These outlets have no grip whatsoever. Must be pretty old, the entire springiness is gone. They do have a GFCI in the kitchen and some older version in the bathroom. I should test them all. It is mid-March and it's super warm. <laughs> Hawaiian warmth? Who would have thought? Ah, sand. The source of all silicon crystals and semiconductors and diodes and transistors and everything. <laughs> Let me teach you how it's done. <laughs> and it seems the architect didn't care about putting a door or a vent for the shower here. So what happens to all the humidity? Maybe they put a vent behind this thing, huh? Damn it. Anyway, nothing. Well, at least I found this. And what in the ancient world is that? I assume it's a smoke detector. It says test weekly. Okay. Test one. Uh, nothing. Uh, test two. Nothing? Isn't it supposed to alarm or something? Okay. Let's check its part number. Hmm. It says refer to owner's manual number this, dated June 1984. Uh, don't these things expire? Oh, it says test unit monthly by turning knob to the test position and leaving until alarm sounds. Okay, let's try again. Oh, just plug that back in. Okay, test one. Wait for the alarm to go off. How long does it take? Hello? Nothing. Let's go to test two. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ha! I say it's not working. Mm, I do suggest you check your smoke detectors regularly. You know, you don't want to accidentally suffocate. If I'm going to mess with the outlets, I better find out where the fuse panel is. Maybe it's not inside. Let me check the perimeter of this house thingy. Oh my god. Electrical room. I should be able to pick this lock. I watched enough lock picking lawyer. I just don't have the tools. I need to get in there somehow. 
It's nothing a screwdriver and a credit card can't fix. I can't see sh Maybe a knife and a credit card. I think I have to use two knives. It's not gonna work. That room probably contains the breaker to the entire society anyways. It must be somewhere inside. It's here. Ooh. Just a cabinet. It is stuck. Oh. Oh. Oh, Canada, my home and native land. And there we have the fuse panel. So I guess I can work here safely, knowing that if something happens, a breaker will pop. Unless the breakers are as good as that smoke detector. Let me see what's going on inside. Okay, so it looks like a typical North American fuse panel. So 220 volt phases are coming in, alternating between the breakers. And the question is, are they 180 degrees out of phase or 120? Let's measure. If I can measure the voltage here. Here you go, like I said. Oh. Blackened my hand. Yeah, I can probably wash it off. But please don't try this at home if you don't know what you're doing. Well, it cleaned up this time, but we don't always get this lucky like the poor probe and the meter. So don't mess with high voltage electronics. And the fuse popped too, so I guess it works. Anyway, I think that's what these probe holders are for so the probes don't get thrown around that easily. Yeah, 120 volts. And between the two phases we have 240 volts. So they're 180 degrees out of phase. So we are dealing with typical North American power and the breakers seem to be working, so we should be safe. Let's close it back up. Like nothing ever happened. Okay, now that we are relatively safe, Let's open this outlet. Okay, the grand reveal. Only problem is that, well, this is Hawaii. And I'm more afraid that some lizard or some creature may jump. Maybe a lizard wasn't too bad after all. <sighs> First off, it's not a good idea to poke around the outlets with a conductive And second, turn off the breaker. Well, I guess the breakers work. Well, I guess the wiring is done okay for the North American standard. My only problem again is that it barely holds the plug, which is bad in itself. The thing is that a good contact has low resistance and a bad contact has higher resistance and gets warmer. Let's give it a try. Let me turn on a 1200 watt iron from this outlet, which will draw 10 amp from it. And I'll check it with my thermal camera. Well, first off, it's not even making a contact. Damn it. There you go. Here's the iron, which is pretty warm. The wires are not too bad, but where it's plugged in, you see, because it's not making a good contact, it's pretty warm. So if large currents are drawn from such poor contacts, over time the outlets will melt and are a fire hazard, I guess. And that's a massive observatory. Unfortunately, it's not accessible to the public. Otherwise, I would check its outlets. Okay, now it's time to test the GFCI outlets. There is a few of them around the house, but this one looks newest, so I expect it to behave normally. Let's try. Okay, the test button works. Anyway, the way the GFCI works is that the current must travel between live to neutral as in a normal device. If the current exits live and goes somewhere else, like Earth, then it's illegal and it should pop open. 
So this means if your butt is touching earth and you accidentally touch life and current runs through your body, this should pop open and save you. I think per North American standard, any current above 5 milliamps should pop this open. So let's try that. I brought my trusty wire here to... And among all the wires I had, I had to bring the one with the broken earth. <sighs> let's see what we can do. I put the multimeter here to measure the current in milliamps. I have a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer that I'll put in series with the ammeter and the power lines and I reduce it gradually until it reaches 5 milliamps or 25 kilo ohms of resistance. I have another potentiometer and the use for this one is its long shaft which I'll shove into earth and use it as an earth contact. We connect them up with some alligator clips. This one connects to earth and that one goes into live. 2.4 milliamp at 50 kilo ohm. That's correct. Now let's start turning it until it pops. Almost. Ooh, I think I was going too fast. Let's try again. Around 4.7 milliamps. So this one is fine. Let's try the other ones. This one looks pretty old. Eh, seems like the Tesla still works. Why did it pop? I guess I hadn't reset it. Try again. Turning slowly. No, 5.3 milliamps. Close enough. So our old baby is functional. Good job. And the final washroom. Eh? The test doesn't work. Hello? Hello? Guys, we might have a problem here. That goes in there. Oopsies, did I just pop the fuse in my meter? Damn it! I turned the potentiometer all the way to zero without thinking. It's okay, I should still be able to measure it through the 10 amp side of it. The meter's precision on the 10 amp setting doesn't seem to be as good as the milliamp setting. But anyway, it shows 1.8 milliamps. Let's increase the current slowly. Well, we are at 5 milliamp and still hasn't popped. Let's increase it. Oop! Did I just burn my potentiometer? Yeah. Oop! So pretty much... Oop! <laughs> I pretty much had a short between live and earth and it didn't pop. Guys, we have a failed GFCI! And a dead potentiometer. My thoughts and prayers. <laughs> and here I thought I was safe taking my hair dryer into the shower. I have to leave some notes for the hotel manager. I think it's good practice to check the GFCI in any hotel you get in, just in case, you know. I mean, I don't think anyone will take a toaster, a hairdryer, or their phone charger into the bathroom with them. You won't, right? But at least if some of us out there are willing to take those stuff with them into the bathroom, GFCI will save them, so they better work. A 12 volt battery, it's broken. So, loose power outlets, failed smoke detector, failed GFCI. Was it worth staying in a budget hotel? Well, budget is a relative term, it wasn't that cheap either. But of course it was worth it, especially since better hotels around here are like $1,000 to $10,000 more per night. Who has that kind of money? Well, maybe you do, then go right ahead. But frankly, I don't think they are necessarily in a much better shape electrically, which might be the case at your own home too. Hotels have been under a lot of pressure during this pandemic and are just getting out of it struggling. My video is not about deterring you from these hotels. Despite everything, it was a great room, a very well-kept hotel and a great experience overall and I still recommend it. All I'm saying is that for your own safety, check the safety equipment in your hotel room and your home. If you have the budget, start traveling so economy starts circulating and hotels have the money to repair and maintain. And let the hotel managers know of deficiencies and they will be happy to fix it for you. And... <coughs> 
Sign up for Keysight Innovation Challenge 2022 from the link in the description. It is open to all graduate and undergraduate students around the world. The contest officially opens on April 4th and runs through June 6, 2022. But you should register now to get some cool Keysight swags or you could vote for your favorite entries starting April 4th. The goal of this contest is to motivate and help finance projects built by IoT devices that best address United Nations goal of carbon neutrality by 2050. So this could benefit the entire humanity. The top five teams will receive $2,500 to build and secure their device prototypes. Then in September 2022, there will be the final event where I will be one of the judges to pick the top three winners who will receive $20,000, $25,000 and $30,000 in cash prizes along with an additional $10,000 in Keysight equipment for their schools. Last time in this event, there were only two female engineering students on one of the finalist teams. I'm pretty sure there are a ton more female engineering students in schools today, so this time we would like to see more women included and participating. So Keysight is asking that every team include a woman team leader and have equal or more female engineering students compared to male students. Up to six students per team. Lots of room. So sign up now to participate with your great ideas or to vote and help the world reach net zero. And thank you for watching.